Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to the Honda City 2019 in-depth review. Now the Honda City is placed between the Honda Jazz and the Honda Civic. Over the years Honda Civic has been made a little bigger car so that it can fit the, the city and if you know about the city then this, this model has been pretty much famous all across the world and then there is no mentioning the fact how good this car is. So it's a budget small sedan that fits right into your pretty everyday kind of uh, economical car that you want to drive every day. But in today's video let us find out how good this car is. Starting from the front. We have a very similar design to what was there before with the addition of a lot of chrome of course but then you get uh, the honeycomb mesh grille which you can see here which again sort of signifies the Honda design and also the headlamps are halogen so you get two halogen headlights and also the LED DRS the daylight running lamps and you also get the halogen fog lamps and pretty much the, the front remains very similar to what Honda designs have been if you find it in HRV or if you see the CRV this is the sort of body language with some thick arches on the sides and and sort of these uh, these, these sort of uh, lines that go on the bonnet and moving on to the side you get 16 inch diamond cut alloy wheels with the disc brakes of course and then on the side you get the smart keyless entry system and then you also have the power foldable miller but you don't get the blind spot warning system also you don't get the camera on the other side which you find on the other on the vehicles and apart from that the design is pretty simple and then it's the sort of sedan the, the mid sedan or the or the small sedan that you would find and at the back again the design is pretty similar too with nothing much change and also you get the non led tail lights as well so all all these are like normal bulbs so your your turn signal your reversing and also your brake light as well and at the bottom also you find some honeycomb sort of design but it is just like a like a fake plastic that they've added but god knows why they did that and at the back you get one reversing camera which i'm gonna come to that later on and we open the boot now the boot is opened by using the button and also you can open using the key so you can use whatever now the first thing is look at look at the there is no sort of spring action on this this boot so you have to lift it all the way in order to open it and also when you want to close there is you heard that there's a very loud noise so it's, it doesn't have that spring action which resists the, the 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 downward action but now moving on when we open it you get a lot of boot space as you can see there is a ton of boot space and uh, easily enough to fit two big bags and also one small bag but also the seats are collapsible so they are collapsible in 60 40 ratio so if i pull that and pull this but then you have to physically push them uh, yeah sorry about that so yeah so that is how much you get in terms of the boot space one thing is there is quite a big lip inside so getting your luggage in and out is going to be a little difficult because uh, once the, the bags are inside it is going to be pretty difficult to get them out because check the lip uh, depth it, it's it's pretty much like as big as my hand so yeah that I think is a, a very big boot lip but apart from that the, the boot space it's pretty fine for a, a small size sedan. I'm pretty impressed. Now on the inside, let me start off with the plastic materials because look everywhere. It's just horrible plastics every single place. I mean, a car, I mean, I get the point that this is like a budget sedan, which is like a small sedan, but then the, the quality of material is still questionable because let's be honest, I mean, you could still improve a bit of quality inside the, the like in terms of the, the door cards and also the dashboard. 
but again you could include I, I i don't know you could have just done something better but but apart from that once you move on from the plastic uh, to the seats now the seats are uh, non electronic but manually controlled and they are made out of uh, your normal fabrics now the 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 seat quality overall is pretty comfortable for long journeys uh, and also it's quite soft as well but one annoying thing is that if you see that there is quite a bit of gap under my thigh so the seat overall is is a little small now i get the the fact that honda is a japanese brand so maybe it's made for you know the people out there in japan but essentially there is quite a bit of space this is me which is pretty much six foot and then if you have if you are someone who's really tall then for you this may be something of a little uncomfortable position and also my my left leg which is resting on 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 the the dead pedal which they apparently give when you are not using that foot it's it's actually quite raised so my 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 left uh, leg if you see is pretty much like i'm sitting and folded my leg in that position but then if that was a little inside that would have been a little comfortable especially during the long journeys anyways continuing with the steering wheel you get the cruise control on your right side and also the infotainment system controls on your left side and overall the steering quality is again plastic it's completely made out of plastic and that feels quite good the steering wheel now look at that you can put it up or down and also there is the telescopic uh, feature as well so you can take it closer to you or away from you and fix your your position for the steering which is just comfortable for you there is also no thing uh, the, the the thumb support out here which i'm afraid if they had given that would have been really easier to use and it's it's a very thin uh, steering wheel as well you also get the paddle shift but then that is up to you if you want to use it and in the dashboard the things are pretty simple you get the odometer in the center you get your rpm meter your rev counter on your left side and also some information on the right side which is pretty similar to the hrv if you remember the you know if you want to watch the video about the hrv then you can click on this pop up banner out here and you can watch that video the dashboard has the 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 symbols which are quite visible even when they are not lit uh, uh, uh because of the backlight but then because of that even during the normal sunlight you can see the dashboard symbols which are quite visible even there is quite a bit of gloss from the dashboard the 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 glass which has been put in front of it so because of that uh, the, the the plastic bit actually which has been put in front of that so when you are in the direct sun you actually cannot see even the turn signals which are glowing and because i, I think it's probably to do with the quality of plastic which can be improved continuing with the aircon now if you've been familiar with the honda brand i've mentioned this before in the honda crv video again if you want to watch the honda crv video you can click on the pop up banner out here and you can watch the in depth review video of the honda hrv now i mentioned that in the honda crv and also in the honda hrv and also the civic rs as well again the pop up banner will come out here you can watch that video as well so the 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 aircon is pretty powerful even for a budget sedan this thing is pretty amazing switch on the the aircon and immediately it cools in just 30 seconds and now the good part is that everything has be the the aircon uh, controls are separate from the infotainment scheme but the bad part is that all of that it's it is touch screen so if something goes wrong with the touch screen then again you you don't have any physical dials to switch on the ac so but otherwise the the aircon is pretty responsive now moving on to the infotainment screen and i'm afraid the infotainment screen has been directly lifted off from the honda hrv and there is just just a rectangular cut out that has been made and the screen just doesn't feel right in it that it just doesn't belong out here i don't actually like the the logo designs and they are just too pointy they are hexagonal and then they are just too sharp the screen in fact has too much of contrast and then during the daylight there is quite a bit of gloss as well so you cannot figure out what is it and there is no physical dial for your volume control or your power supply so 
in order to switch it on you have to switch on the button and then also the volume is out here of course for the driver there is an infotainment controls out here as well but even for a passenger it, it's it's a it's a little difficult to operate now in terms of uh, infotainment features you get the your bluetooth you get your fm you get your am you also get a usb and also you get the hdmi port as well somehow honda just keeps giving uh, HDMI ports into every car but if you notice I haven't mentioned about the auxiliary port and that is because this car doesn't have an auxiliary port. Continuing with the storage you, you get quite a bit of storage in your door cards on your driver passenger and the rear passengers as well you can put a liter of a bottle easily uh, apart from that there is not much of storage space and you also get two cup holders out here under the aircon and two cup holders in the back in the armrest for the rear passengers and there is some storage out here which I don't know you can store some screws or something it's a thin sort of storage you don't know what you can store and another storage which is this the handrest that is pretty small and then there is this sort of flimsy kind of just a, a sort of carpet that they put inside come on Honda you can do better so they they just put this inside and and it's it's a very tiny uh, hand rest as well where you can store about half a liter or something of water bottles and also you get your normal uh, glove box as well and apart from that that's pretty much it in terms of storage you also get the, these these uh, sun visors which are really flimsy and they are pretty loose if you see and then there is no light now in terms of power socket this car comes with your one 12 volt 120 watt power uh, outlet which is one in the front and you get two power sockets which is again your 12 volt 120 watt for the rear passengers as well but apart from that that is pretty much it you get three outlet ports the gear stick is pretty uh, easy to operate which is your standard because this car comes with a CVT we'll go we'll go over to that as well when we do the uh, the drive video but apart from that uh, the, it's a pretty simple kind of system where you have the parking reverse uh, neutral drive and your sport mode in the sport mode things become just a little more more fruity and you know the response just improves and you also get the econ mode where you can save a lot but anyways this car is amazing in terms of uh, its fuel efficiency which I'm, again I'm gonna come during the drive video as well now continuing apart from that the whole the whole fit and finish is pretty good if you see like that the, there are no visible gaps in terms of the build quality but the only only thing is that if they had used a better quality of plastic that would have been really nice anyways let's move on to the back and check out how good the back space is in the back first of all look at how much I can open the doors by the way look at this like you can it is pretty much perpendicular like 90 degrees close to that angle but that is pretty easier for a the, the rear passenger to come in and out of the car and also the seating position is quite comfortable but one problematic thing is that the 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 floor in front of the pass the the rear passenger which is the the passenger seat in the front the floor underneath that starts curving upwards for some reason and that is why you don't have a lot of uh, uh, your leg room underneath so for longer journeys it may be a tad bit uncomfortable and again the same sort of smaller seats they don't have enough of uh, the, uh, because I my position is so raised and I am sitting way too down inside into the seats that is why you can see the my, my, my legs are bending almost upwards and then there is not enough of thigh support and apart from that five people can easily sit uh, there is no sort of hump in the middle so five people can uh, I'm, I'm sorry three people can sit easily in the back seat as well and also there is an armrest with your cup holder by, uh, and in the back you also get your rear air conditioning and the charging cable for the rear passengers and apart from that the, the seats also curve uh, uh, quite nicely so there is quite a bit of uh, knee room if you see and also there is enough of headroom if you if you see although the, the car is sloping at the back but it, uh, somehow there is 
quite a bit of leg, uh, leg room as well as head room in the back as well. The Honda City gives you an average of between 13 to 15 and if you really are very careful with your throttle then it can even give you up to 16 to 17. Yes, now that is possible because the Honda City has a 1.5 litre petrol engine which is HOHC IV Tech and which is 16 valve four cylinder and that produces about 118 bhp and it produces 145 newton meters of torque now if you ask me initially from the engine the power delivery is very erratic like you know it takes a while to just you know build up to that smooth sort of power development but once it crosses about 2000 rpm then the power delivery is quite smooth then also this uh, this engine is mated with uh, a cvt transmission so the cvt transmission obviously will give you a little lag but not in like a lot but then honda's cvts are pretty responsive in that way so press the throttle it takes a little while but then it will respond to that now Apart from that, the, the engine feels very, very punchy, like although it's a 1.5 litre, but then the car is very light and that is quite visible also when you drive because oh, when you when you try to go like at higher speeds, the, the car becomes pretty floaty on the surface and it becomes pretty light. And coming to the lightness, the steering is pretty light in the Honda City. Now, I don't know, it's an electronic steering by the way and for some reason the, the, the steering is pretty sensitive so even if you just give it a little, a degree of turn on the wheel and then the car just starts going around and this is specially quite magnified when you are driving the car at around 100 or 100 plus kilometers and at that point of time the, 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 the response is pretty pretty high i would say this car is a front wheel drive car as is with all the hondas as well honda usually makes either the all wheel drive or the front wheel drive but never the rear wheel drive i think honda it's time you try a rear wheel drive but moving on so the the ride quality in general is pretty smooth i would say it's quite comfortable surprisingly it's super comfortable but at times annoying now the the suspension setup on the honda city is pretty soft but then in a good way when you're cruising around in the city is quite comfortable but as a result of this what happens is every single bump on the road is magnified and you can feel it though the the seats are comfortable that that is that is uh, quite, that is what i would mention but otherwise the, uh, the the suspension setup is on the softer side but then for some reason there is very bare minimum amount of roll and that is what is pretty surprising if if i'm honest because i think the 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 anti roll bar is pretty good on this car and that works quite well another point that i wanted to mention was that the turning radius is quite amazing i mean this car can literally go around its own like literally i mean it, it does take like a, a one and a half sort of rotation of the steering wheel as a result of that but the turning radius is so small it can actually turn around its own axis and i am not even kidding you because this 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 car has a turning circle very similar to a hatchback which is quite surprising although yes this is a small sedan but to have a turning circle a radius i mean a turning radius which is which is this small it's quite amazing so this car comes with four disc brakes and they work quite well they are pretty sensitive and they do their job quite well when when you want them to perform the braking action so in terms of the safety system the car comes with two two airbags one for the passenger and one for the driver it comes with your abs which is anti-lock brake system it comes with ebd which is your electronic brake distribution it also comes with electronic brake assist it uh, comes with your traction control it also comes with uh, an isofix for your child seat but that that is a little bit of a 
finding you know you want if you want to find the 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 points for the child seat it's it's buried way inside the seat and you have to it's a real struggle to find them as well and apart from that it also comes with your emergency stop signal so if you happen to brake the the car suddenly then the the parking brakes would be uh the the parking lights i'm sorry the parking lights would be uh switched on on its own and one very cool feature which i wanted to specially mention was that this car comes with a whiplash system now whiplash what is a whiplash system whiplash is something when you suddenly have have uh, like if you have a sudden accident and the car comes to a standstill from say a high speed to suddenly drop that zero so your neck tends to have that Uh, effect you know the sudden force and because of that there are chances that you might snap your neck by you know uh, having a sudden uh, jerk and that is what is called as the whiplash now what honda has done is they made the whiplash system in the seats itself so what it will do is there's nothing electronic everything is done mechanically and that is brilliant so in case you were to happen to have an accident and what what the seats would do is they would reduce the jerk on your neck as a result of the sudden uh, braking action or suddenly coming to a halt and as a result of that these headrests and the back support uh, which you see on my seat they will just recline slowly and they will make sure that they absorb all the accident the the impact from the accident and it doesn't harm your neck now this is a pretty cool feature especially in UAE where the speeds are super high i mean pretty much the average road speeds are 100 and they go upwards up to 140 and as a result of that if, if in case of an accident this system is quite good so the car also comes with your reversing camera and your parking sensors as well but the camera quality is a is i would i would say is quite okay because a because there is a screen which doesn't really have quite a nice resolution and plus on top of that the camera quality is in great so the image is pretty grainy and it's pretty dark especially if you are in a dark area so because of that the screen has quite a bit of contrast as well and then no doubt you can in adjust the contrast and the brightness but in in even after doing that as well there is quite a bit of darkness i hope you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you like this video and if you want to subscribe to my channel click here and if you want to watch more videos then you can click here anyways until we meet next time bye bye